So this video is a little bit different. What we're going to be looking at here is just a few kind of reminders, recaps and some things around some of the coding concepts that are really important when we're creating any projects using Microbit. Now the two bits that I really want to focus on here are variables and conditionals and really understanding these two things is what's going to take students from simply using the basic inputs like button A is pressed, shake, etc. and moving them on to build more complicated programs that could work within um, a more full-featured model. So just going to start a new project here. Just call this one variables. Now you will see the use of variables in multiple projects along this video series so I'm not going to do the entire everything we can do with variables in here um, but just a real basic sense to understand what a variable is. So um, I guess if we were to look at a definition of this, a, a variable is, is a piece of information that a computer or in this case the micro bit is going to remember and that piece of information, that piece of data can be changed, um, but it will be stored and remembered within the device. So um, an example of this then, uh, I'm going to start just to create a variable, I'm just going to call it steps. So this is one of the most simple projects um, using variables is to build something like a step counter. So for this one, I've built this variable called steps, so this will have a value, a number value. Um, so I guess this is the great tie-in with um, sort of algebraic thinking that you would do with students in their maths work. Um, so okay, so steps. It actually by default all variables have a step, uh, have a steps, have a value of zero when we start out. However, just for illustrative purposes, I am going to start and set the value here to zero at the start just so that we realize that it starts off has a value of zero but that is a bit of a given. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to bring in this one that says on shake we're going to with that variable we're going to change the value of steps by one so every time we shake the micro bit it's going to add one to the value of steps so if I were to go to the simulator now over this side um, steps has a value of zero if I shake it it increases it by one and absolutely that's working however we haven't actually told it to show us anything on the screen but but I can promise you it is working um, okay so what we're going to do now is we're just going to add a simple on button A is pressed it's going to sorry show number go to our variables steps okay so just going through the program steps is set to a value of zero when we shake it it changes that value by one so it'll add on one every time we shake it when we press button A it's going to show us the value of steps whatever it's up to okay so we press A it's zero I shake a lot of times now I press A it has a value of 20 now it has a value of 27 now a value of 36 and this actually would make a variably accurate um, step counter we actually found this works reasonably well if you were to tie it to someone's shoe or their ankle for wrist this doesn't really work as a program uh, the wrong sort of movement with your wrist um, but it works quite well tied to someone's shoe or their ankle. So uh, we could expand this a little bit. So we could say, okay, so I'm going to add a button B in here. And what button B is going to do, if we press that, it's going to set the value of steps back to zero again. So we've made a reset button now. So starts off being worth zero, shake it, it increases by one. When we press A, let's show that number. And when we press B, it's going to reset it back to zero again. Okay, so press A. A. Again, it's worth five. With eight now, press B. Now, not an immediate response here. I would actually have to have to press A again to show that it's now worth zero. So actually, what we could do here, we've got a couple of options really. Uh, we could throw one of these in. Not the whole thing. Throw one of these in. 
just after here so that it shows the number after it's been reset. Let's try that. Okay, it's worth three, press B, shows you it's back to zero. But this number constantly displaying on the screen kind of gets in the way of the next number sometimes. So what we might do is just expand our little program. Uh, how long is it going to take someone to read the number? Maybe a couple of seconds. And then we'll clear the screen. And we'll do the same here as well. Okay, so what we have now then, press A, it's worth zero. That's going to go off after two seconds. There it goes. Do some moving. Press A. Okay, that's worth 18. Press B, shows it back to zero again, and then it clears off the screen. Okay, so we're just doing some basic stuff with just a single variable here. But we can do lots of different number operations on it and, um, and all sorts of things really to use a variable as a way of tracking data. So within your program, if you've got a particular something that you want to keep as a constant and then we'll be able to change it, then a variable is the way that we would do that. Now these tie in um, quite closely with conditionals as well, um, which is the next part of this that I will go into. And now we'll just take a brief look at conditionals in here. Now, um, the next two videos actually that we're putting out um, are two different micro bit projects that are, they, they go into conditionals in much more detail within those projects. Um, but just to understand how this works, so obviously you've got basic inputs here. Um, that you can use and yes this is a kind of conditional if button A is pressed do this if we shake it do that um, but you'll very quickly run into limitations working that way when you want your project to be a little more complicated um, and that's where we would start to use some of the logic here um, this idea of if something is true or could be multiple things or different things or not something um, so if you want to make a, a more complicated uh, logic, then this is where we would start to use some of these. Um, so how we use these, I guess, we'll just do this in a really simple way. Um, we will just say if um, true, let's do button A is pressed. So I mean, at the moment, it's very similar to using this. Um, button A is pressed, let's just simply light up let's just light up all of the LEDs here but what we can do with this is we can add here an else so simply the opposite if button A is not pressed or released um, then we'll clear the screen so we can ditch that so what we end up with now is something whereby when we hold down the A button it's going to be on but when we let go it's going to switch off again which is a behavior that would be harder to replicate actually just using this um, so we actually use the same uh, code actually with some students doing a Morse code um, sender so it would actually then just obviously flash up the whole screen with the LEDs um, and they could flash it for a period of time by holding it down for a long time or just pressing it quickly if they wanted a quick flash on there. Um, but conditionals will be super important when you start on some of the longer projects. As I say, the next two um, really you go into a lot of um, a lot more detail, I'll say, uh, with using conditionals on them. But um, really between these two things, between using variables and carefully using conditionals like this, these are really the core concepts that students need to understand um, if they want to make more advanced projects and, and once that understanding is in place really you do start to see students start to do very creative and different things um, with the micro bit and things that they're coding.